Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thank you for tuning in today. In today's episode, I'm gonna be working on the awesome truck that my dad gave me. It's lacking something that I would like it to have, and that's the ability to haul a car trailer. Uh, yes, it's a 1500 and it's got a short wheelbase, but still, I'd like to try. I've added power to the engine. Also, uh, it's got a better transmission and an awesome transmission cooler. Now I need to do some wiring and add some new components. And specifically, I need to add a trailer brake controller and also a seven-way plug in the back. I've only got a four-way plug in the back on it now. So I'm gonna be installing a trailer brake controller and a seven-way plug setup in the back of this truck. So if you need to know how to wire one of these up on your truck, uh, the information in this video should be helpful to you. So stay tuned. Here are all the components that I will be installing on the truck. And we'll start over here with the trailer brake controller. And by the way, I'm linking all these down in the description if you want more specific information on this. So this is the trailer brake controller that I uh, chose. I also got this uh, seven-way plug assembly. Here is a closer look at what that's gonna be. But this one also has the uh, other style uh, four-way as well. So this, this will be capable of doing both. It's got this little pigtail here. Here's the bracket for it. Uh, also, this is uh, referred to as a repair harness for the seven way and this plugs into this and this will be all my connections to the vehicle. I also have here a 30 amp fuse, uh, inline fuse assembly that I will be installing. Uh, they don't come with these eyelets, I'd already put this on, but it'll give me a head start on what I need to do. And this is a 30 amp resetting circuit breaker. So when this circuit breaker trips, it automatically resets after a period of time. And this is super important for this installation. Before we get started, I have the two main wiring diagrams laid out on this workbench. And I will also link in the description a website that I found that has great resources on trailer brake wiring, has, helps you identify wire colors and all that. But the wire colors on this seven way are fairly typical from the research that I did. And this is what we're gonna be wiring into the vehicle. Now, as I mentioned, I already have a four way uh, plug in the back here, which we're gonna use some of those circuits um, to wire into this and make things easier. However, I'm gonna to need to add two wires in particular back to this plug, and one of those is going to be a battery positive. Now I'm gonna run this uh, 30 amp fuse that I talked about. I'm gonna run this back to this connector, and it's gonna, like I said, have this 30 amp fuse in it. So that'll be for that. But additionally, what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to extend this blue wire coming out of the trailer brake controller back to this, and that goes into uh, this blue wire here. So I am gonna to need to run those two wires, but real quick, I wanna point out this uh, auto reset 30 amp circuit breaker that I mentioned earlier. The reason why we need this instead of a fuse and the reason why we need to wire this directly into the battery is, say worst case scenario, um, we're driving down a hill or something, towing a trailer, and suddenly the trailer brakes go out. If it was just a fuse circuit, that fuse would blow and that would be it. This resettable circuit breaker will reset and maybe a couple of times just to give you enough brakes to get stopped someplace safely, which is hopefully what happens. But um, that's why we need to wire things up this way, in this way, in order to make these trailer brakes work properly. This is the power distribution block on the truck. I'm gonna take my 30 amp fuse circuit, run it off of this power distribution block down in through my wiring harness and back to the back of the vehicle. Uh, but I'll be able to pop that fuse cover off and replace this fuse if I need to. And by the way, everything in this power distribution block is hot all the time, but we're not running the uh, power for the trailer brake controller through here. We're taking that directly off the battery. This is just for the 12 volt accessory going back to the seven way connector. I'm gonna mount the trailer brake controller right down here uh, by my shifter. And there's a couple of important things about mounting, mounting this. You wanna be able to reach it while you're driving easily. Um, it also needs to be level. This thing has an inertia switch inside of it, so it needs to be level when it's mounted. I'm gonna start this by disconnecting the negative battery cable. Next, I'm gonna work on mounting my circuit breaker, which I believe I'm gonna put right here. Uh, it's really close to the battery. I'm gonna use 10 gauge wire for this and run straight out of this positive battery terminal down underneath the battery tray to here. Um, from there, I'm gonna go back into the harness and run it inside the cabin of the vehicle to go to the trailer brake controller. And I just noticed, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this copper terminal is the one that's supposed to go to the battery. Uh, it says bat here, and then this is the one that goes out to whatever accessory you have. All 
All right, we're all mounted. Here's the underside of that mounting. I would have preferred to have the screw heads coming down this way, but that wasn't possible. The nuts wouldn't fit on the top. Uh, and the reason for that is, is the tire is right here. I don't necessarily want it coming into contact with any of this. I don't think it will, but just be mindful of that if you decide to mount your circuit breaker in a similar way that I did here. Next, I'm gonna run my wires. Here's an update. I've run a wire from the positive battery terminal down underneath the uh, battery tray over here to the circuit breaker. Then I have one from here in the circuit breaker and I've just sort of roughly laid these things out. And that one goes inside the cab going to the trailer brake controller um, and its color is also hot. I only had 12 gauge wire, but according to the instructions, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, this one is run under the vehicle. Uh, this will go back to the uh, connector for the trailer, and this is the accessory power for the trailer. It's gonna run through this fuse. I've just tied it up here. Just roughly laid things out. I've got the spools of wire underneath the car right now, or I'm sorry, underneath the truck. And I also have, going through the uh, firewall here, uh, one of these is the power coming from what I just showed you. And the other one is gonna head back out to the trailer brake connector. And the way I've identified them, since they're both black, is uh, one of them has that blue piece of tape. That's the one that's gonna head back to the trailer brake connector. And the one that is just black is the power coming from the battery. And I've just used the same pass through that I've used for a lot of my wiring for this truck project already. Now the task is to take these wires from here and run them along the frame and all the way back and make sure I have enough wire to get all the way back here. And then we'll sort out where we're gonna mount the connector, which I believe is gonna be right about here. Here's my two wires. They run all the way up from the front. And I've left myself plenty of lead. Uh, it looks like they tied in this connector here, but I'm gonna be using some of these wires. And looking at this, I've got my work cut out for me because well, I found this ground, which sucks. I also found, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, you see where somebody ran that harness right between the frame and pinched it going up to the taillights? Well, I'm gonna take care of that also. And it also looks like there's a missing fastener there as well. It looks like this one, this connector goes also to the reverse lights, so I suspect one of these wires is reverse light, so we'll just need to tie into it. Well, I've done some work. You may be able to see here. I went in and I moved that harness out of here. So I pried up with my pry bar and pulled this thing out. A little bit of the plastic is still in there, but all the wires and everything have been pulled through. I'll show you on the other side. I also found a fastener and installed that over there. And I took this out. I'm gonna use this as something of a breakout. I've gone into the wiring diagram and this is, this is the one coming from up top. And this is uh, how these wires break down. The brown wire is the running lights. The yellow wire is the left turn signal, I believe. The light green wire is the reverse lights and the dark green wire is the right turn signal. What I'm gonna have to do somewhere is tie into the uh, light green wire so that I can have a reverse light signal going to my seven-way connector. Here's the wiring diagram for the truck, and you can see the backup lights are here, and this is what we're gonna need to tie into. You see it comes down here to this uh, C24 into the connector, and comes out as this light green wire. So we know that that's for the reverse lights. We can verify that also. I believe a lot of those wires that got smashed, there were a bunch of black wires in there and they seem to be all tied together. I think there were these grounds, but that ground back there, I'm gonna redo anyway because there's some exposed wire. Uh, good grounds make for good electrical systems. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is clean, tight, well connected so that it all works properly. After removing and unplugging the left rear taillight, I was able to come over to here and get a closer look at the damage and what's happening to these wires. Uh, this yellow wire is damaged. These grounds are all squished in here and I don't like that. So I'm gonna redo this ground. Uh, I'm just gonna go through these wires and perform you know, needed repairs. All 
right, here's my handiwork. Everything is back in, no longer smushed. I fixed this ground. Um, these are actually solder connections, so that's, they shrink solder. I've used these before on this project, and so far they worked really well. I also took some time to, uh, to clean up this ground eyelet so that that's all nice, and it will live back here after all is said and done. I may even clean off some bare metal there to create a better grounding surface. But for now, I'm going to get all this stuff back into place and ready so that we can continue with the installation. Next up, I want to figure out where I'm going to mount the plug. And I put the receiver in here just to get an idea. What I'm trying to avoid is a situation where, say, the trailer's all the way jackknifed, say, all the way over like this, and there's a plug sticking out of here. I don't want it to be in a position to where it can get broken. It would have been nice to be able to put it up in here, but this is a bit wide because of this extra connector here, and I don't really foresee that happening. Plus there's, you know, just, just that area in there I don't think is gonna be suitable. Uh, I thought about down here, but I think that's a little bit low. Also, I'm not exactly happy with the wiring there, so I keep coming back to this as a mounting location. Now, I can always move this if I need to. Well, thankfully, it's on a plug. So if I need to move it back this way and you know, I actually hook it up to a trailer and find that things are different. But I'm mentioning this now so that you know, as you mount your connector, you put it someplace to where one, it's gonna be serviceable and that it's not gonna be damaged um, during the course of use, like say towing a trailer, like I said, if it's jackknifed over like this or something. So when you do your mounting, uh, spend some time, figure out the best location. I just used some self-tapping screws for that. That's about as secure as it's gonna get. Secure as it needs to be, I think. I'm going to uh, come back in here and maybe, I think put a piece of conduit on this, on these wires, just cause I'd like to. That's better, right? I think it's better. Now let's get this guy connected up. Here's an update. I have finished wiring in the circuit breaker, which is now connected to the battery, but the battery's still disconnected at the moment. Uh, I also uh, finished connecting the uh, trailer power uh, going back to the trailer, and I took some time and put the wires in the harness. It may have been premature, but these are just wires. There's no brakes or connections or anything in there that I'm concerned about at this time. Uh, but at the moment, there are these two power wires coming in under the dash that I ran through the firewall. The blue one, or the one with the blue tape, is going to be uh, for the trailer brakes out. And the black wire coming in is that power from that circuit breaker that I showed you. In the back of the truck, I've ran the two wires. The red wire is the power for the trailer, and the black wire is actually uh, gonna connect to the blue wire and the trailer wire connector. That is the signal coming from the trailer brake controller. I plug this back in. That ground is just hanging there at the moment because I'm going to run my own ground. I'm going to reconnect the battery now, and I'm not concerned about those wires that are on the floor that now have power going to them because they're not connected to ground and they're not touching any metal. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. But I can hook this uh, negative cable back up and start my testing. I'm going to use my power probe for this, but you can just as easily use a test light. Uh, that'll work just as good. One of the first and easiest things I can check is that power wire that I ran. So this red wire that's going to be the trailer power. Yep, we got power. That has the power we need that's hot all the time that has fused a 30 amp fuse. My biggest question here is really the reverse lights. So I'm going to turn the ignition on and also put the transmission in reverse. 
Okay, well, I don't have any reverse lights back here now, and I just realized why. Remember that ground connection? I'm kind of lucky in that my power probe has a ground connected to it. So this little pigtail coming off of that can go up here and attach to this and provide a ground. And things should work. They should. Although they won't. <laughs> Now that I think about it, so nothing's gonna work because that connector is not plugged in. So without that connector plugged in, then I'm not gonna have my lights or anything. Therefore, I need to go into to the light green wire port, which is the second one in, and check for power there. All right, so the second one down, second one down is light green wire. It should have power on it now, and it does. So that means I have power going to the reverse lights on that green wire and I can verify this by putting the transmission in park and seeing if I still have power. Transmission is now in park. Let's check that thing port and there's nothing, nothing on it now. So I know I found the reverse lights. Now I'm gonna plug this back in because this uh, pigtail connector has all the other wires hooked up so I can check the turn signals and the running lights with this. All right, everything is all plugged back in now. Let's try the right turn signal, or left, I'm sorry. It's working out here now. Left turn signal, I believe, yellow wire. And we have a turn signal, so yellow is left turn signal. Uh, right turn signal should be green. And it is. Let's try the running lights. All right, we've got running lights back here. We can see my license plate lights are both working. Good. And this should be the brown wire, which now has power. I'm just gonna check to make sure that my reverse lights work now that I have ground. Yep, they're looking good. One more check uh, here inside the cab before I disconnect the battery. And that is, I just wanna see if I have power on this black wire, which I do. So this is what's gonna power up the uh, power, the trailer brake controller. So I'm now verified that I have power here. The only unknown we have is this guy, which we'll uh, sort out once we get the trailer brake controller hooked up. And now I'll disconnect the negative battery cable again and hook up all my wires in the rear. Here we are in the back again. Now I've taken the pigtail and I've plugged it in. And I've done this because I wanna know what all my wire lengths are. I wanna make sure that I get it all right because I, you know, with my grounds and everything, I don't have to run extra wires. And I often do this uh, just to try to get my wire length correct. I find that to be one of the most challenging things when doing this. And I find that just laying things out ahead of time usually helps. That is so I have a good clean ground to work with. Grounds are super important. Make sure they're clean, tight, and secure. Um, I believe the white wire is ground. And I checked the wiring diagram, and it is. I think it would be nice to take this up and over. I'm gonna put a conduit on this just like I did before, but this, this gives a little movement to everything, just in case I ever need more. Darn near perfect the way it is. I'm actually gonna use the full length of this to save me I'm having to deal with it. Best ground's gonna be the battery, but it's a long way to get there from here. But a good body ground should suffice. The other challenge is gonna be the reverse lights. I could use one of those clips to tie in, but this is a highly corrosive area. And a lot of dirt just road debris, all that kind of stuff will collect back here. If I'm not mistaken, reverse lights are purple. Got like this solder set up. You don't want to run everything so tight that it puts a strain on stuff. Remember, my battery is disconnected, so. There's a little no danger of shorting stuff out, which is just the way we want it. 
If memory serves, these other colors were all the same. The only difference being is this black wire has to go to this red wire. And then this blue wire needs to go to this black wire because that is the wire for the uh, trailer brakes, or brake controller, I should say. For me, it's just matching up colors. Oh, well, that's that. We'll let those set up before I wrap my conduit. Here's a better look at my finished work. I like for the ground. Here's my finished harness before installation. Now, you may be asking yourself, Eric, what happened here? Well, the purple wire ended up short, and since I already connected everything, what I did was I just looped it around and made a little fat spot in this. I'm not too worried about it, but all the wires are protected from chafing, which is the entire reason that I do this. Uh, now I'm gonna hook up the grounds, uh, reconnect the connector, and, well, I guess, move everything up and out of the way into final position. I'm just gonna spray a little white lithium grease down inside of here before I connect it. That way it'll help, hopefully, keep it from getting any kind of corrosion. There we go. I'm very happy with that. Took some work, but it was worth it. Before installing the trailer brake controller, while I still have it sort of on the lift, I'm going to actually test everything at the uh, trailer brake connector, or seven-way connector, I should probably say, seven and four-way, and see if everything works there. And once I'm assured of that, I can back the truck off the lift and start working under the dash to get the uh, controller installed. A couple of things we can check before we even get started, and that is this one on the upper right should be the power. And uh, down here on this one should be ground. Okay, so we got those. We got power and ground. Now let's check the other stuff. I'm going to check both the running lights and reverse lights simultaneously. The lights out here look good. Nice and bright. I like that. All right, for the running lights, I should see power on this upper left one here, which I do. The reverse lights are actually the center. Oops. It's not a really nice yelling, so that's not quite 12 volts, maybe. Uh, but we do have power there. Usually it yells at me when I got 12 volts. This means there's probably a little bit less, but maybe with the truck running, that won't be the case. But at least uh, these are powered up. All right, let's try a left turn. Left turn should be this one that's all the way over on the left. And it's working. Let's try the other side. Right turn signal is just the opposite of left turn and the other side. Also working. So we've verified everything except for the brake control, but possibly we can do that after we get the controller hooked up. But I just thought of something. I didn't check any of these plugs here. So I'll check those real quick. Looks like uh, right turn is this top one. I think the other turn signal is the next one down. And it is. The only other thing this guy has is running lights, which should be this bottom one, which are on, and then ground. So everything works for this one also. And just because I mess with everything, I'm just gonna check to see if the brake lights are working. And they are. Oops, almost forgot to install the spare tire. The only thing left is to mount the uh, brake controller and hook up these wires. So this uh, black wire is gonna be my hot all the time. That's the one that's running through that uh, uh, circuit breaker that we installed. And this is gonna be the power going back to the connector that we just installed uh, for the trailer brakes. So there's only two other wires that we're gonna need here. And one is we're gonna need to run a ground, which similar to what we did in the rear, we find a good metal surface and we can attach it. Best grounds are at the battery. But the next thing is we're gonna need a brake light signal. And the signal that we're gonna need is going to only be hot when the pedal is depressed. 
Now you're looking at the back of the brake light switch connector. And down at the bottom on my Chevy is the white wire. And that's the wire that we're going to tap into because that one is hot when you depress the pedal. The orange wire is hot all the time and the two wires up to the top, I suspect, have something to do with the cruise control or something else. But uh, the wire that we're concerned about is the one that goes hot when you depress the pedal. And that, in this case, is going to be this white wire. So we're going to have to tie into that to send a signal to the uh, trailer brake controller. All right, now this is difficult to show you and it's tricky. I've already shorted it out once because there's a piece of metal right underneath it, but you'll be able to hear it. So right now it's grounded. I'm on the, I'm back probing that white wire. I hit the pedal, it goes power. And that's what we're looking for. Something that uh, gets power when the brake pedal is depressed. So when the brake light switch is closed, that's what we're looking for. Now this isn't as difficult as it might seem. Uh, this is the harness going up to the brake light switch. I'm going to open it up and look for the white wire and tap into it, and I'll run that over to the trailer brake controller. Before I go there, because I want to make sure I get my wire links and everything correct, I'm going to mount the uh, trailer brake controller, and that way I'll be able to know where my wires and everything are going to end up. I'm just going to run some self-tapping screws up into the dash. And I also want to make sure that I can open the uh, ashtray so I'll have to make sure that it clears that. I've got everything mounted up now. It took a bit of doing. That shifter was very much in the way. But now that it's mounted, uh, my wires are run. I ran uh, the two wires that I ran through the firewall up above the steering column, kept it away from anything with a brake pedal. Now, think about it. You don't want any wires or anything getting tangled up in your brake pedal as it moves uh, during its travel. So I went up above the steering column here and through and over and I have both wires out here now which uh, looks to be plenty of wire for what I need. Now as I mentioned I have a ground right here that I'm going to run a wire down from that. I'm also going to tie into this white wire in this harness. I'm just going to use one of these connectors. Not my favorite thing to do but they do work and this is inside the cab so it's not going to be exposed to the elements. Uh, so I'm going to tie into my white wire for the brake light here and uh, send it on over, get everything hooked up, and we should be done. Well, after we reconnect the battery, that is. Here's something of a pro tip, if you will. I actually got this from Humble Mechanic. This is a seam ripper. It is excellent for going up into wiring harnesses like this and opening up uh, tape. You just basically stab it through. There's a blade on the inside here and push forward. I really can't do this one-handed, but uh, I'll show you the result well, when I get done, but you just sort of puncture the tape. Oh yeah, actually went a little bit easier and then push forward and it cuts stuff like this open very nicely. And if you're careful, there's no damage to any wires. If they're a buck at the dollar store, I'd be surprised. These are only a few cents, but I found this to be extremely valuable for stuff like this. Here's the result. I've stripped back the wiring and I've installed this clip. Now, one thing about these clips, always check. So I've cut the other end and I've tried to maintain continuity with this harness. So I've run a red wire for this signal wire. I'm gonna run a white wire for the ground. Here's the other end of that wire. Press the brake pedal. So I've verified that this wire is sending a signal. Cause like I said, make sure, you know, I use a pair of pliers to squish this together, but check it and make sure that it went through the insulation and you've actually got a decent connection. Now it's just a matter of running this ground and connecting all these wires up. And it's pretty much gonna be color to color. I have completed all of my wiring. Everything is connected. I'm gonna reconnect the battery and I'm gonna test it one last time. I'm also gonna see if the uh, trailer brake controller powers up like it should. If everything works like it should, I'm going to uh, loom this stuff up in a little harness and tie everything up out of the way and tape some stuff over here. Basically finish my installation. The controller has powered up. That's a good sign. So it's getting what it needs there. I'm hitting the brake and I don't see anything happening on it. And I wonder if it actually needs a trailer connected to see a complete circuit in order for anything to happen here. I'm gonna go back to the connector and see if there's any signal that comes out of the uh, trailer brake controller wire uh, going to the trailer when I step on the brake pedal. I have the brake pedal depressed and we can clearly see that the brakes are working or at least they're getting a signal back here. 
Now the one going to the trailer brakes is going to be the one here on this lower right. Um, so that one over there, I'm just going to probe it and see. Weird. So that's a strange noise, which means something's going on. Uh, but I'll uh, release the brake pedal and see if I still have that noise. Let's see what we've got with the brakes released. Nothing. Okay, so I know that there's something going on, so now it's, it's just uh, regular ground. But when I do depress the brake pedal, something is happening, so I would call that successful. It's time to button things up and make it pretty. One last thing, I just went into these terminals and hit them with some white lithium grease. I'm hoping this coats things and keeps things from corroding because uh, I'm not going to be using this all the time and I definitely want a good connection when I need it. So something to protect from corrosion uh, would likely be a good idea in this scenario. Haven't put any of the covers or anything on but this is what I did. I just sort of ran a piece of conduit up onto it and uh, zip tied it up under the dash. Looks like a clean install. And over here I just added a little bit of electrical tape. Uh, to a couple of key places to keep everything up and out of the way. Like I said, I haven't installed this lower cover yet. When I do, you uh, likely will see very little of this. Pretty much the same as what was there before. I'm real happy with how this went in. So here's the super finished install. And from up here, this is what you see, which is basically nothing. I'm happy with that. Job done. And finally, I installed my 2 and 5 16 ball on my hitch. I put it on there upside down because I lowered the truck and well, we'll see how that works out. Anyway, uh, I don't really consider this a difficult job. It's really just a matter of checking things uh, and having the right wiring information. I'll link some information down in the description for you that I hope you will find helpful. I found it helpful. Additionally, it's just make sure your connections are good. A good set of crimpers is helpful. That seam ripper is also helpful. And just make sure that, you know, you work carefully. It, it, it was time consuming, mainly because I wanted to run the wires through the wiring harness and, you know, put conduit around the outside of them and really do a nice clean installation. This way I know that down the road, I shouldn't have anything to worry about. And especially with something as important as trailer brakes, I, I think it's worth the time and effort to, to make sure that it's right. Make sure your ground connections are nice and snug and, and verify everything. Like I said, you know, even if you have a wiring diagram and you're like, ah, I know what those wires are and all that kind of thing, just check it and verify it. Make sure everything works correctly, especially in the end when you've got the connector and everything all set up. And then once again, when you hook it up to the trailer, just to make sure that everything is good with the trailer also. So be safe when you do this kind of stuff. Link in the description will be uh, the parts, the tools, uh, like I said, that wiring diagram, uh, useful information. So please check the description if you have any additional questions of things you did or did not see in this video. Also, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you to head to ericthecarguy.com. Also linked in the description as well as additional videos that may be related to this one. Want to see more stuff about this truck? I'll link it down in the description. Anyway. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with the world. Really appreciate it when you do that stuff. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I will see you next time.